So here's our game again. I can rotate the ship and I can tell the ship to go forward by pushing the up key or up arrow key. But the ship's not going, even though in the background we are moving the ship using ship position. Remember, we removed ship position from this part of our code. And that's because I do not want to do this addition. I would rather do my translation inside of my operator as well. This operator is the 2x2 two two matrix that allows us to rotate. But then after we do the rotation on each vertice, I then have to add the ship position to get the ship to move. And I don't want to do that. I would rather do it all in one nice, succinct operator here, matrix operator, applied to each vertice via the matrix multiplication. So we are trying to eliminate this. If I take it out, again, we cannot move the ship forward. We can only turn the ship, which is going to make a game of maybe we're making asteroids. It would make asteroids a little more difficult. So let's use the concepts we saw in the previous video. Uh, to do the translation inside of the operator. operator. But now, we can no longer use a two-dimensional matrix. We have to use a three-dimensional one. Which means we will retire matrix 2D and we have to write a matrix 3D, which means more unit tests and all that other kind of stuff. I highly encourage you, if you're coding along with me, and hopefully you are coding along with me, but I encourage you to pause the video and see how much of this you can do on your own. And also, if this is boring to you, but you wish to keep going with the the suite of videos on making your own game engine, then just rip the code up real quick and go ahead and skip all these videos. But I'm actually going to take the time to unit test this correctly and to also implement a matrix 3D instead of a matrix 2D. So first things first, let's go to our engine and math here. I'm going to add a new item, very much like matrix 2dh instead we're going to do matrix 3dh so matrix 3d and allow visual studio to drop the h on there for us we get a nice clean file now i could uh copy and paste it's tempting maybe i should maybe i shouldn't i tend to and i, I know i've talked about this before but i tend to make a, a lot of mistakes when i copy and paste so i actually like to code the items out again and also, it's good for an educational perspective, I think, for you, if this stuff is new to you, which it probably is, to see me go through this stuff again, to write the code again, to talk about it again. Uh, repetition is a great thing in programming. But that, with copy and paste, when I copy and paste, I think more than half the time, I still end up making an error because I don't change enough of the code. I miss a little thing here or there, and then I have to debug. So it takes me as long, if not longer, to copy and paste as it does with just typing it out again. So I will selectively copy and paste and maybe still make some errors. Here we go. I'm going to grab, let's grab this much of this file, go over here and paste. And now I need to remember to change this to a three and this to a three and put some closing curlies on here with a, not a semicolon on the namespace, semicolon on the matrix class pound and if right there. And then just because I don't want to keep these in, I'll probably end up adding them back in later, but I want to just go as raw as possible. So namespace math, this should be a three, not a pound. I didn't notice that. We have the red squiggly. That's just Visual Studio IntelliSense having personal problems. Uh, matrix 3D. So row zero, column zero, row one, column one. So in the two-dimensional world, we had row zero, column, oops, column zero, and then right here, we had row 0, column 1, right? Well, we need another one, row 0, column 2, to make the three-dimensional one. And then this will be row 1, column 0, row 1, column 1, that sort of pattern. So let's stick with that. Row 0, column 0, well, row 0, column 1, and column 2. And then let me grab these, control C, V, V, V. These all need to be a 1, these all need to be a 2, because that's that's how it goes. See row 0, row 0, row 0, row 1, row 1, row 1, and so on and so forth. I should point out that I'm laying out our RAM in row major order, meaning the row first and then the column. So um, 
we read, even though we think of the basis vectors, if I make a three-dimensional matrix here, like so, I keep talking about the basis vectors working like this. And so you would think, well, I would probably do the column at first and then increment the rows within the column. But instead, what I'm doing is this type of approach. And the only reason I'm doing that is it works out quite nicely when we interface with the graphics system. But the idea is still the same. It's still when we're multiplying uh, this against a vector, say the vector had components A, B, and C, well, it's still A times this column plus B times this column plus C times this column. Okay, that's called row major order. We're addressing the rows first and then the columns within the rows. All right. Okay, there's all our components. And then it's tempting to go over here and say, well, what did we do with matrix 2DH? Should we add that over here? We probably should. And just proactively add code. But you saw I proactively added code with the copy constructor and assignment operator. Uh, I think that was with the vector2 class. And then it turns out I didn't need it. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to code as we go along here and code as necessary. Let's go to Solution Explorer. So we have a three-dimensional matrix, and then we know we needed a three-dimensional vector as well. We have vector 2dh. We're going to need a vector 3dh now, or 3d, a vector 3d. So vector 3d, and let's look at vector 2d and see what we're comfortable copying here. I'm probably just going to copy this much for now and go like this, add float z semicolon. And to be honest, if I was making this math library, I was going to ship off and somebody else was going to use. Yes, I would proactively go, hey, what are we doing in the t 2D version that we need to add to the 3D version and proactively add all the operators and so on and so forth. This is an educational piece of work and I think it's good to write code as we need to go along just for the learning purpose, not necessarily going enterprise with this code by any means. So we have a vector, oh look, I almost made a copy-paste error. That's vector 3D and 3D and 3D and need to look at this very close, see if there's anything else I'm missing. It looks pretty good. So we have a matrix 3D, vector 3D, save, control shift S, save all files. Let's go back to our game. Right, instead of saying matrix 2D and vector 2D, we're going to say vector 3D. So let's go back up here and say vector 3D and vector 3D on these. And that's going to cause some build errors, obviously. First things first is that I, I don't know what vector 3D is. In fact, looking at this... We, oh, yep, okay, so we're going to change this to a 3. I thought we hadn't included vector 2D originally, but it is vector 2D, and or 3D now, and matrix 3D, so it should know what vector 3D is, because we just included it using math 3D, and let's see, yep, IntelliSense catches up with us, but now you see it's like, eh, 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 we didn't add a constructor, well, Let's go add a constructor. Well, if we add a constructor, if we're going to stick with our unit, our test-driven development system that I'm hoping we, we can follow along as much as possible, I need to write the test for the constructor, ensure that they fail, and then go and write the constructor. But now I've made my code file here not compile. I mean, I hit Control shift b and I'm kind of stuck between no man's land. So do I change this all back to vector 2D so this can compile and then go do the unit test thing and then come back and forth and blah blah blah. Well I'm actually going to come up here and say build configuration manager. I know I messed up my sandbox game. We're going to uncheck that for now. Please don't build it. Ignore it. We're going to go to test land. We're going to make the constructor work in test land. Then we'll come back and all the red squiggly should go away. I can hit control shift B now. Build succeed because now all we're building is the engine project and the engine tester project but not the sandbox game. Okay, let's go here and say set a startup project. In the next video, we're going to write some tests for the constructor for Vector3D and move on from there.